Today we are adding a little bit of everything to the binder, including reserve list, planeswalkers, and promos. Let's take a look. What is going on everybody and welcome to week number 11 of the collection update series. This is the series where we are taking a look at 12 new cards every single week, a full page in the binder that we have been working on for the last 11 weeks. Now our goal for this series is to finish up this binder. We are a good chunk of the way in actually. I think we're over a fifth of the way through so we've got a little ways to go of course but we're making some good progress. Now, as part of this, I am asking you guys to share in the comments what kinds of cards you are collecting, whether it be a recent pickup, something you'd like to pick up, or maybe you started a binder with us and you want to share some of the latest cards you've gotten for that. Now, normally at this point, I would have a little comment pop up and we'd talk about it and say, hey, thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, but unfortunately, nobody commented last time. So that's sad. Hopefully that is not a sign that this series isn't doing very well, but you know what? We're going to persevere because we've said we're going to do it and we have to continue. One thing also, I just really love this series. I love collecting. This is truly where my heart is at with magic. So this is right up my alley. So if nothing else, I'm going to take a look at the next 12 cards by myself and enjoy every single moment of it. So let's jump right in. As always, guys, we are going in Wooberg order here. And our first card is actually Masako the Humorless. Hope I'm saying this correctly. This is all the way back from Champions of Kamigawa. Obviously, a nice little uh, arc back to the original Kamigawa block, which we just kind of got to revisit uh, with Neon Dynasty, which was really fun. But uh, this is actually a really interesting card uh, because it says you can play it at instant speed, essentially. Uh, and then tapped creatures you control may block as though they were untapped. And I find that like a really interesting and just unique ability. So when I saw this, not only did the art, the art, wow, really strike me as just absolutely beautiful. I love that uh, really center screen kind of look, uh, but it also just struck me as a really unique piece. And it does hold a little bit of value, which is kind of cool, especially considering I really haven't seen this card before. Uh, I will say Kamigawa's, Kamigawa, the original block, was one of the most uh, polarizing blocks, I'll say. Uh, of the time because it was overly complicated but it was also such a cool theme and so it's great to see a return of that this year with Neon Dynasty I think it was a good time to do it and uh man what a beautiful card absolutely stunning really happy to have this next up we are moving straight into black because we actually don't have any blue cards and we have Blood Lord of Vazgoth I hope I'm saying that correctly as well this is the M12 uh promo version which truthfully I just think is stunning you guys know uh, if you've been a part of this series at all for any amount of time, I very much enjoy promos, especially with alternate artwork, because I do think they're beautiful. Uh, we do have another one later on that does not have alternate artwork, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, but this one really strikes me as just an absolutely stunning card. The beautiful artwork here is absolutely amazing. It does feature some cool bloodthirst mechanics as well, which is really interesting. But uh, truthfully, I just got this because I like promos and I love the artwork. Uh, there's not much value here it's just a really pretty card uh, and sometimes that's enough i think it's really important to remember that while we're collecting you can collect for any reason that you want to collect it doesn't have to be because every card needs to be a high value uh, and so this is a really good example of a card that's unique and that's enough for me and i absolutely love it our next card is our first reserve list card and it's actually a revised version of dark pact uh, which is a really interesting card because it deals with anteing, which is not something that's been a part of Magic since the very beginning. They very much uh, nixed anteing very quickly, uh, and probably for the best, but uh, I do actually really think any card that mentions anti is always kind of a, an immediate snap up for me, uh, just because I think it's really silly and really funny. Uh, I would love to, just with friends and not with anything too valuable, I would love to like sit down and have an anti in game where uh, you do have to actually put a card up for, for anti, just for the fun of it, only if people agreed to it, of course, but I just think it'd be a really interesting thing. Uh, and it adds a whole new dynamic to the game as well. Uh, and so it's just really interesting. It's a really cool arc back to how far we have come in Magic, in my opinion. Uh, again, this was one of those things that got nixed pretty quickly, but there's a lot of other things that kind of followed suit right afterwards. And this was just a really big uh, start to the game. And so for the historical relevance, as well as just being part of the reserve list, I thought, you know what? I'd love to pick that up. The artwork is also very, very interesting. So again, a beautiful piece. 
Speaking of reserve lists, we get to keep that going with Dystopia. This is an enchantment from Alliances featuring the cumulative upkeep mechanic. Uh, in this case, you do have to pay a life. Now that does keep uh, accumulating or exponentially growing. Basically, you have to add another point of life every single time you do it. So it is a little bit costly, but what this allows is for some massive, massive hate uh, especially against green or white, which says during each player's upkeep, if that player controls any green or white permanents, he or she sacrifices a green or white permanent. Uh, obviously, a big, big uh, tell for how far uh, hate has come in Magic. Uh, we certainly have a lot of powerful hate cards, but in the early days of the game, what I found to be the case at least was it was very color centric. And what I mean is there were a lot of things that just picked on a particular color uh, and really picked on that color. This being one of those examples. Uh, this is reserve list. It's not super high value, but it is a cool piece for that reason. Uh, and again, the artwork here is absolutely stunning. I love the old school artwork, uh, seeing that big full moon in the background and just the agony that it seems this person is in is just amazing. Uh, I think the detail and the, the beauty of this whole piece is really stunning. Uh, and I just really like picking up stuff like this. It's really unique. Now, moving into red, we are still talking reserve list, and we actually have Eternal Flame. Now, this is a little bit of a higher value card in comparison to the other two that we have seen so far. Not by much, but we are hitting double digits with it, which is kind of nice. Uh, and this is a really big, like, aggressive red card. It's a sorcery for four. It deals in an amount of damage to your opponent equal to the number of mountains you control, but it also does half of that damage to you rounded up. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting piece because it's very red focused in the, the burning of the opponent, but you also kind of take a hit yourself. Uh, it just kind of shows and really demonstrates that color philosophy of, you know, chaos and, and burning and all the massive damage spells and things like that. And so I actually kind of like this card for that reason. It seems like kind of a silly one, but it is actually a really interesting piece. I didn't know this card existed until now, but I'm really happy that I picked it up. Uh, and again, always picking up reserve list stuff if it's affordable. Doesn't feel like a bad idea, even if it is only a couple bucks. I know we picked up a lot of like kind of junky reserve list cards, but it's still fun. It's a it's a nice piece of history. And if nothing else, the reserve list alone uh, is that that really interesting kind of uh, talking point that you can discuss if you if you have a friend over and you're talking through your collection or whatever, if you happen to be doing a video like this. Uh, and so I really like picking up stuff like this. Beautiful card, our only red card, but very nice. Now, earlier when we were talking about the Bloodlord, I did mention that I love alternate art uh, versions of promos, but this one is not. This is our only green card and it's Scavenging Ooze. Uh, now, in particular, this is the Love Your LGS version of Scavenging Ooze, which does have that beautiful OG artwork, but it also just has a really cool old school foiling and card frame. Uh, we picked a Goblin Guide up with this same treatment uh, just a couple weeks ago, in fact. Uh, and it actually is one of my favorite versions of Goblin Guide. I think it's absolutely stunning. And surprisingly, these are super cheap. This is less than a dollar to pick this little guy up. And Scavenging Ooze is a good card, as is Goblin Guide. Uh, and so for me, I was just kind of surprised at the the inherent cheapness of the card. Uh, but I really love this. Um, I do use Scavenging Ooze in quite a number of decks. It's great in cube. It's great for a lot of things. Uh, and so this was an easy, easy choice. I believe I picked up a full playset also because I just wanted to have these available. Moving into the multicolor section, we have our only Planeswalker, which is Sarkon Vol. Uh, now this, I believe, was the original Sarkon, uh, which is really, really cool because Sarkon has had such an interesting arc, such, such an interesting number of color combinations as well. Uh, but this was the original, I believe, uh, red-green version. Uh, four mana, four loyalty, but very aggressive, giving plus one, plus one, and haste to all creatures. Gain control of a creature, untap it, and it gains haste. And then you can put five 4-4 four, four red dragon creature tokens into play. Uh, absolutely stunning card. I love the artwork of this. Sarkin is not a card that I use very often. It's great in cube and things like that. Uh, but I just don't happen to use it very often. And this one isn't particularly viable in a lot of scenarios. However, uh, it is a really pretty card and a really cool card. And it does feature, in my opinion, the color philosophies of like Gruul very, very well, which is growth and aggression. Uh, and in particular, in that plus one, you can really see that at play. Uh, again, our only Planeswalker this week, but a really cool card and a really nice piece of history from a Lara block. Absolutely love that. Uh, and yeah, just super stoked to have this one. 
going back to the reserve list guys we actually have urge rego which is a really interesting one this is all the way back from legends one of the original legends which i think is really cool uh, most of these are reserve list if not all of them uh, but the important thing here is that they're just really unique pieces they generally suck uh to be honest uh this is not a card you would want to play it's a first strike four four for seven with a very irrelevant ability that says swamp walk creatures can be blocked as though they didn't have that ability that's not particularly useful especially because the land walking abilities really aren't played much anymore uh however uh the historic revel re relevance wow of this card is really nice because it did feature a lot of new things at the time the legends the mechanics the uh the actual multicolor side of things all of that was relatively new at the time and so it was a really nice piece of the magic history and again we're getting to see this really play out in our favor with the reserve list we're seeing the value go up on this and it's surprisingly expensive to pick these up despite the fact that they're really not playable uh it does have some absolutely beautiful artwork though that classic old school look really love this and very happy to have this in the binder jumping into artifacts we are starting with one of my favorite cards which is defense grid now this may not look like much but it is played a lot in things like workshops and stuff like that because it shuts down uh, a lot of the control lists that you see in other versions so uh normally things like legacy love to play this this is two mana during each player's upkeep turn uh, or excuse me during each player's turn spells played by another player cost an additional three that's a pretty heavy tax especially if you're looking like legacy uh or even vintage in some cases where mana is very restrictive uh and what i mean by that is not that you can't get a ton of mana because obviously that's not all that difficult in those formats but uh generally you have a very strict game plan in those formats uh and you can't really pay for the additional three most of the time uh, and so this shuts down a lot of control lists it makes a lot of the fair decks not work quite as well if they're trying to play stuff on the opponent's turn uh, and so i think that's really interesting and it's just a big shutdown uh kind of a prison card and i really like that to be honest i love prison strategies uh maybe i'm a bad person but you know what that's okay it does have beautiful artwork by mark teden and funny enough i'm actually reading what this is talking about right now in the original novel series which is kind of fun uh, i love seeing cards like this that uh, feature artwork or feature places or uh, even people in some cases characters that are actually you know featured in the story and getting to kind of make those connections it's really fascinating you uh i i, I joke around because every night i'll i'll read before bed usually a chapter or two of my latest book and in this case it's some of the magic books and a lot of times I'll jump on wiki and like get really distracted and I read on Kindle and so it tells me how long the chapter should take it ends up taking like 20 to 30 minutes longer just because I'm in the middle of like googling and seeing where this actually is and all that kind of stuff and where it's referenced in the game on cards like this and so it's a really nice little thing to be able to do and it's just a nice piece of that puzzle that you get to put together now another Urza's legacy card that we have is part of the reserve list there's a theme here uh ring of Gix. Now, this is not as high value as Defense Grid, but it is a really cool card. Again, mostly because of the reserve list, but also because Gix was such a big character in the original story. Uh, kind of one of the main villains, of course. Uh, and just a really interesting card. Um, I actually already have one of these, funny enough. But it came up and I was like, you know what? I guess I can't have more, or it wouldn't hurt to have more than one. And so I picked up another one for the binder for the reserve list potential of it. Uh, it does have echo so during your next upkeep after you uh play the permanent you have to pay for its casting cost or sacrifice it that's a really interesting thing but what this does is tap down artifacts creatures and lands so it's kind of a cool little ability it's nothing too crazy of course uh and that echo makes it a lot worse and a lot less playable uh but again it's more for the historic preference or, or, or relevance of this it's not necessarily for playability i think it's a really pretty card i think it's a really interesting card and again with that historic relevance it just means a lot to me uh which is why i picked it up now the last two cards are pretty heavy hitters the first is not reserve list but it is umizawa's jite now this is betrayers of kamigawa we have actually had a couple kamigawa cards funny enough uh but this is a very good card again played in a lot of different uh formats because of its power level uh you're able to do a lot with the charge counters and it's flexible uh what you're able to do is choose between one of these equip creature gets plus two plus two until the end of the turn or target creature gets minus one minus one until the end of the turn or you gain two life 
And every time the equipped creature deals damage, you get two charge counters on it. You get to choose one of those by removing just one charge counter. Uh, and so you can really stack these pretty quickly. And as you're you're dealing damage, it just gets that much worse. You can also do that thing that at instant speed. So no matter what the situation you find yourself in, as long as it has counters on it, you can use the ability and hopefully use it to your advantage advantage in a significant way. Uh, really love this. This is kind of an honorary sword in my view. I know it's not a sword of blank and blank, uh, but it's very much in that same vein. Uh, and in my opinion, one of the more powerful ones too. Uh, so I love this card. This has always been a favorite of mine. I've already got two. I'm working my way to a playset. This makes three for me, uh, which I'm really stoked about, but I can't pick any more up for the binder. We got to do Singleton all the way through. So uh, unfortunately we can't do another one, but just a cool, really, really powerful card. And speaking of powerful cards, we have our last one of the day, which is a reserve list Lotus Veil. Vale. I believe this is the highest value card we have gotten this week. Uh, and it's a really interesting one. So when it comes into play, sacrifice two untapped lands or you bury the Lotus Veil. Vale. So basically sacrifice it. Uh, but this adds taps to add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. That is a repeatable Black Lotus for those of you who don't understand that. Uh, now, here's the trick with this. Here's what you do. I believe it's Blood Sun. I believe it's Blood Sun that you use, uh, which shuts down all abilities of lands other than mana abilities, which means when this enters the battlefield, you don't have to sacrifice anything uh, and you can just immediately tap it for three, uh, which is kind of ridiculous, but it is actually a really nice little combo. Uh, it's not something I have seen really work super well, but when that card was printed, uh, Blood Sun, I believe it's Blood Sun, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, uh, but when that was printed, this really had a price spike because of the, the little mini combo that that introduces. Uh, so a really interesting piece, and again, a very high value piece uh, in terms of reserve list value, but also just card value. Really cool. Uh, love the, the prospect of getting repeated Black Lotuses. That seems really cool. But with that, guys, that's the 12 new cards for today. Let's talk about the binder as a whole. All right, guys, that is another page down for the binder. I want to encourage you uh, to keep track of the price of the binder as well as the percentage done. We'll have those things up on screen for you here-ish. Uh, but I do want to encourage you, if you're not collecting along with us or if you did uh, pick up a card and just haven't shared it yet, share it with me in the comment section below. I would really appreciate that. I joked in the beginning about, you know, nobody commenting and that kind of stuff, and I get it. This isn't a high value series in terms of what people want to see on YouTube. That's fine. I get it. Uh, but it, it's important to me. Uh, and so I'm going to continue doing this series, even if only I'm watching it. Uh, but I really do enjoy it. It's a blast, guys. I do want to hear your stories. I want to I want to collect with you guys. I don't want this to just be a me thing. So please feel free. Share anything that you've picked up over the last, the last week or so. But uh, I do want to say a huge thank you for watching, guys. I know this has been a big week for It Resolves with getting streaming involved and all that stuff. Uh, it means a lot to have your support, and hopefully we can continue to grow the channel together. Thank you guys again for being a part of this channel. It means the world to me. I love you guys very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys again very soon.